The Lord be with you. And also with you. How good it is for each of us to be here today in God's house. And uh, thank you for those of you that are joining us on the live feed. The order of service for those of you on the live feed is right at the top of the live feed that you will see a um, link for that and invite you to download that and follow along. <clears throat> today is the 19th week of Pentecost and in our service today we hear our Lord and Savior invite us to come for the feast is now ready. So we take and think of that today as we go through our order of service and as we are invited to that feast of all feasts. We begin by singing our opening hymn, hymn number 556. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice. 556. Five,
join together in our confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. And upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. to God on high. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but by the greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament lesson is from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter. <coughs> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe every tear from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God, we have waited for him, that he may save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our epistle lesson is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need. For I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast. But they would not come. And again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatted calf have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention, and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants and treated them shamefully and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite all the wedding fe- all to the wedding feast, as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called... But few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. (laughs) 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. His name was Jacob. He was named after the patriarch, the son of Isaac. 
the father of the twelve tribes. That was very special to him to have that name. Though he was not a special person, he was in fact about the furthest thing there ever was from being a special person. He was a lowly laborer. He was born of poor parents who were laborers. He didn't have much in life, but he was content. He was a stone worker. He was what was known as a rock cutter. But it was a good job. He was able to pay most of his bills on time. However poor and measly it might seem to others, he was living life. Plenty of folks were much worse off than him. But one day, as he was working near the king's palace, he noticed something different. He was working there by the king's palace and he noticed that there was a great amount of activity that was taking place. In fact, the place, you could say, was a buzz. Servants were coming and going. There were decorations being put up all around the outside of the castle. There were new buildings that were being built. Orders were being given. Do this, do that, go here, go there. Put this here, put this there. As the busyness of things went about. Jacob wondered to himself, what special event was about ready to take place? What was happening that all this buzz was in the air? Whatever it was, He didn't look forward to that day because he knew that it would interfere with his work day. He knew that there would be lots of guards. There would be questions going on of everyone that passed by. His daily life would be disrupted. Ah, he thought to himself, maybe I'll just take and not go to work that day. I'll just stay home. Well, the preparation went on for some time, and his curiosity got the best of him. When all of a sudden, one of the king's servants passed by where he was working, and he called out, and he asked the servant what was happening. What was the special event? The servant replied, a wedding. Not just a wedding. It was the king's son. Now it all made sense to him. The king had only one son, and he was his prized son. He would do anything for his son because he loved him very much. This was going to be the wedding feast to end all weddings. It would be the celebration of all times. Life, work, And daily things would all be disrupted. And then, he thought to himself, how lucky those people were that would be invited to this. And then he worked on for many days until finally the day came for the celebration. The castle looked incredible. There was lights and decorations everywhere. He could just imagine what it would be like inside, how breathtaking it was. Jacob indeed had thought about staying home to avoid the uproar that day, but you know, it was just yesterday that bill collectors had came to take and ask him to pay. He needed to make money, and so he went to work. He was kind of glad to be there, and yet he was anxious. This was a sight to behold. But it was strange. Where were all the guests? Where were the crowds? 
The servants returned as usual, but there were no guests with them. That was strange. Then he saw even more so servants go and come back. But they were alone also. What was going on? And what were they saying? He strained hard that he might hear what the discussion was. Those fools! Don't they know that the king has spared no expense? This is no day for people to stay home. No day for work. No day for shoveling manure or planting fields. No day for balancing your books. Those fools, what is wrong with them? And then, what was this that Jacob saw before his eyes? There were more servants returning, but this time not mumbling, but groaning. They had been beaten. They had even carried one who had been killed. Jacob dropped a stone on his foot when he saw what was taking place. He had never dropped a stone before. He was a perfect stone layer. This day, it made no sense to him. But then, then something did make sense. He saw the royal troops once again leaving the king's compound in a hurry. They were out for battle. You could tell it by the looks on their faces and the weapons that were in their hands. Revenge. No doubt, they would take and get revenge for the king for what had been done to those servants. Why hadn't they come? Why were they so spiteful? A free feast. A rich feast. Well-aged wine, a rich feast of marrow, an aged wine that had been refined to its greatest. Why would you ever turn down such an invitation? Couldn't the farm wait and work wait until tomorrow? Couldn't the balancing of the books wait until tomorrow? He pitied those poor fools. But before the troops could return, he heard more servants that were leaving the king's house. What would happen next? What would he see this time? He wished that he could leave. It was beginning to get late in the day, and he was tired. And his foot was hurting him greatly, as he felt that maybe he had broken it. But then, as he looked, these troops, they were not mad, but they were joyful. They came over to him. Jacob, they said, the king wants for you to come to his house this day. But Jacob thought to himself, I've worked hard all day. I've labored and this foot, it is just throbbing. And I stink. I smell like the dust of the stone that I have been cut. I'm not worthy to go. But then the servant spoke and said, the king wants you to come. Those others who were invited, they refused to come. They are no longer worthy. But don't worry about yourself. We'll take care of everything. We'll get you washed up. We'll give you the wedding garment. You're going to love it. Things are going to be amazing. Just wait till you see the inside. And still in unbelief, they grabbed Jacob. They grabbed him by the arm and they dragged him into the king's compound. It wasn't out of anger, it was out of joy and excitement. They took him to the bathing place in which he bathed. 
His nails were groomed and cleaned. His beard was trimmed perfectly. And there was placed on him a garment for the wedding feast like he had never seen or wore before. He would never, ever be able to pay for something like this. And then they took him into the banquet feast. And instead of placing him at the very back of the banquet feast, they brought him to the very front to sit right next to the table for the honored guests. The table where the king and his son and new wife would be sitting. There he could see everything. And the table was filled with food and wine and so much stuff that he couldn't believe what was there in front of him. He forgot all about the throbbing of his toe. But then all of a sudden he looked up. There from that front table he looked up and in came the king. And as the king came in, the king looked at what seemed to be looking right at Jacob. And he thought to himself, oh no, the king is going to speak to me. The king knows that I'm not worthy to be here. I'm undeserving to be here. He could tell the look on the king's face. He was not happy. But the king looked right beyond Jacob. He looked to Simeon, the one that was sitting just behind Jacob. Jacob knew Simeon. He had worked with him a couple times on a building project. He had spoken to him just a few moments ago. He asked Simeon why it was that Simeon was wearing his work clothes and why he was dusty and dirty and hadn't cleaned up. Simeon responded, well, if I'm not good enough for the king as I am, then too bad. And began to eat and drink and enjoy himself. Jacob didn't get it. And then the king spoke. The king said, friend, how did you get in here without the wedding garment? Silence came over Simeon. He gave no answer. Say something. What are you doing? But Simeon just kept eating and drinking and engulfing himself in the things that were there. The king was furious. The king said, bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. And before Jacob could even blink, Simeon was gone. And another one came in, one that was in the finest of clothing. And the king spoke up and said, eat, my friends, drink, dance, rejoice, rejoice. For my son has this great celebration. My dear friends in Christ, Jacob the stonecutter, friend of the king. It's been a strange but wonderful day indeed. And that day is your day. Because you are Jacob. You are not worthy because of your filthiness, of your sins, your thoughts, your words, and your actions. They make you completely unclean, as they do for me. We are not worthy to come into the king's presence and to join him at his feast. But the Lord has taken and bathed us in the waters of holy baptism. And he's clothed us with the robes of the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And our Heavenly Father no longer sees those sins, those thoughts, those words, those actions, 
that we have committed against him and his commandments. Instead, he sees nothing but the righteousness of Christ Jesus. He sees the garments of salvation that he has covered us in. And now he says to you, my dear friends, come for the feast is now ready. A feast beyond all feasts, one that we cannot imagine. A feast in which the Lord gives of himself his body, his blood, given and shed for the forgiveness of all of our sins. A feast that says, come you who are weary and heavy laden, laden, and I will give you rest. Come. For the feast is now ready. And here at this feast, we have a foretaste of that which is yet to come. The joy of heaven. The feast in which we shall eternally join with the bridegroom, Christ Jesus himself. In that eternal mansion of heaven. That day we rejoice and we long for. For the Lord has come to announce to you this day your sins are forgiven. His mercy is new to you each and every day. So my dear friends, come, the feast is now ready. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. to, I invite you to remain standing for the prayer of the church. <clears throat> Invited by our Lord and encouraged by his promises of mercy, love, life, and forgiveness, we are bold to come before him with all of our prayers and petitions. For the church, for leaders of the church, and for all pastors and missionaries, for those preparing for church vocations, and for those that are considering full-time church service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the blessing of marriage and faithfulness of husbands and wives, for the children that are entrusted to their care, for loving care of children who have suffered abuse and neglect, and for those who open their homes to children in foster care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those that celebrate anniversaries of their wedding feast this day, for Bruce and Lana Gast, Bill and Carla Watson, Shirley and Ernie Feicher, Don and Betsy Mefferton, Rudy and Barb Vitek, Brian and Linda Ratzberg, and all others that are in our hearts and on our minds, that they give thanks to God for the gift of husband and wife 
being united as God's dear children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those that celebrate birthdays this week and recall their greatest birthday of the gift of holy baptism, making them children of God, we pray for Karen Borchert, for Borchardt, for uh, <clears throat> Jordan Borchardt, uh, Bouchard, for Terry Ray, for Jane Steyer, for Don Geertz, Christian Kohler, Don Mader, Elaine Trimberger, Angie Miller, Ruby Mel, and all others that celebrate birthdays, we give thanks unto you, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For the welcoming spirit in our congregation, for boldness in our invitation to those that are without a church home, for a willingness to serve our neighbors in need and the stranger who lives across our paths. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For compassion towards the sick and those who are suffering, for care of those who are in need of our assistance, for the hospitalized and the recovering, and especially for Joyce Claus, Keith Eaton, Mary Voigt, Karen Beard, Roy Mel, Reverend Marvin Alburn, Laverne Worth, Donna Meese, Carrie Hine, Roman Brockman, Kathy Rigotti, Diane Olson, Alan Monteufel, Luke and Marilee Weingard, Shirley Fleischer, George Olberge, Don Mader, Ann Keller, Mark Becker, Roman Tarenko, <coughs> Scott Donchi, Tom Howden and family, Lynn Olson, Norb Pomeranke, Barbara Thomas, Mona Barkey, Lee Weinig, Rose Kozlowski, Roger Kemp. Joan Reinke, Tom Drum, Merle Weber, Sandy Seha, Anna Enderly, Oliver Siegel, Todd Brickle, Jeff Dion, Marianne Hollister, and Laurel Worth, as well as those that we name in our hearts, that God may grant them healing, comfort, strength, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the elected and appointed civil servants, for all judges and magistrates, for all emergency personnel, for all members of the armed forces, and for all of us as citizens and neighbors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our communion upon the body and blood of our Lord, and for hearts that burn with desire for the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom that has no end, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for grace, that we may hear and heed the invitation of our Lord, and joyfully wear the baptismal clothing of his righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. All these things, Lord, we pray that you would grant us according to your mercy in Jesus Christ, and to fill us with contentment that trusts in your uh, graciousness, and that our hearts may enjoy perfect rest and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, 
who in loving kindness sent forth your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in your sacraments. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated. Special thank you to Connie Hankel for singing this morning during the gradual for us. Uh, also want to remind you that there is a number of Bible studies that we are offering here at church. Um, just a couple of them to uh, tease you with. Uh, there are many other ones, but um, this morning uh, following the service, there is my Bible study that takes place in the conference room, which goes over the catechism. Uh, Pastor Aliad, I believe you're beginning in person and Zoom today, correct? Yes. Um, it will be in the large fellowship hall. So um, that begins today. Um, this evening, uh, there is Blaine's uh, Genesis study, and if you'd like... That one is done on Zoom. If you'd like information on that, uh, please ask uh, one of us about information on that. There is the Tuesday morning women's Bible study, and there is the Thursday morning men's Bible study, and that's just a few of them to mention. Um, so we are trying to uh, begin in a safe way with offering opportunity once again to be in the Word of God other than just for the divine service. Um, school will begin back up on uh, Monday morning. Uh, we had been off this last week, but we'll be back on Monday morning. Thanks be to God. So let's uh, take and conclude then by singing our uh, final verses, stanzas of our hymn, Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice, hymn 556, stanzas 6 through 10. <laughs> <laughs> 